Victory Studios in downtown Little Rock. This is Capital View. And good Sunday morning to you. Welcome into Capital View. I'm Jay Burr. The capital city just passed its budget for 2020. And actually here to join us to talk about the funds and to wrap up 2019, Little Rock Mayor Frank Scott Jr. Boss, we appreciate you coming on here. Let's 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 dive right into this budget here because there's a there's a lot going on with it. Uh, it's a 212 million dollar budget, a little bit of a bump up uh, from last year's budget. Kind of what, what did you guys see in terms of, of the revenue and the expenditures? Well, when you take into consideration not only our general revenue but as well as our street funds, is actually a 276 million dollar okay. uh, budget. Uh, so we're excited that we've had uh, one of the earliest past budgets uh, since 1988. Yeah. Uh, we were very intentional about starting early to ensure that the city board of directors understood exactly what the goal was in, in regards to funding our priorities together. And we're excited about the passage of that. Uh, and we're excited to make sure that we continue to show uh, the city of citizens of Little Rock that we're focused on public safety, quality of life, education, economic development, uh, and housing as we continue to move forward as well as infrastructure. And more importantly, this is the first time ever uh, that the city of Little Rock has engaged in education, and, and it was reflected in this budget. Yeah, and, and I did notice that. It was about a $500,000 uh you know, set aside for that. I guess what's the plan for that? Because I know uh, with LRSD and, and just some, a lot of the stuff uh, that's been going on recently with that, I know you kind of came out with a plan of your own as well. Uh, so it, it seems like you're really stepping up to, to make this sort of a, a cohesive effort. Well, it's time for the city of Little Rock to demonstrate leadership in regards to being engaged in the educational affairs because right. we all understand um, education will help grow the city, city of Little Rock. And so we wanted to demonstrate that by creating a, a community schools model with the community, mm -hmm. uh, ensuring that uh, we are focusing on wraparound services for our most challenged schools. And kind of what does that look like? Uh, I mean, obviously, you've got to get through some of the minutiae of things, but I guess big picture here, what does that kind of look like to you? So big picture, we understand that many of the most challenged schools, there are issues that are outside of the classroom. Right. So what we want to do by having uh, targeted services, which are called wraparound services, mm -hmm. it could be as simple as understanding that there are food insecurity issues yeah. uh, with many of our children in certain schools, uh, to as complex as social, the need to have more uh, mental health and social workers within our schools and focusing on health care, uh, but also additional services as regards to educational achievement, mm -hmm. educational assistant, uh, assistance so our children can receive as much care as possible so they can uh, be best positioned to uh, achieve educationally. And if they achieve educationally, that'll help ensure that our city reaches its full potential. There you go. And, and also, too, uh, the, the funding for the Rock Region Metro increased by uh, a pretty uh, healthy margin here. Right. Uh, what was the need for that? Kind of what did you guys see? Well, uh, public transit is a priority for the citizens of Little Rock, uh, and we want to ensure that we continue to have more mo mobility within the city. Right. And so we are utilizing street fund dollars uh, to focus on how we ensure that with the Rock Region Metro. And, and kind of on that topic here, I, I know you guys have kind of kicked around this light rails sort of thing, talking about uh, public transit here. Uh, I, I guess what's the vision for that? And, and it, it kind of sounds like something really far out, but it, it seems like it's a fairly simple concept. Well, least. sometimes I get a, a bit of trouble being on social media with my team, <laughs> uh, and I tend to have different thoughts. And so sure. for quite some time, uh, I've wa I, I dream of the day and have a vision for uh, the citizens of Little Rock to have greater interconnectivity through mobility, right. and that's by having a modified li light rail system. So one of the goals... Uh, during our tenure is to really be bold by having this type of vision mm -hmm. uh, that we can turn from a vision to a plan of action. It's not something that'll happen within the next two to three years because right. it's going to cost an inordinate amount of money to get done. Yeah. But we have to start sowing the seeds now mm -hmm. uh, so we can have that type of growth. That's the type of leadership we want to have is chart uh, the citizens of Little Rock to a new future and being a new catalyst for the New South. I, I guess perfect picture here. How would that look to you? Perfect picture, I think, one, logically, from an infrastructure standpoint, uh, the question is, is, will it be above ground or below ground? Right. Uh, but from that standpoint, we want to see uh, something that goes from downtown Little Rock to West Little Rock, uh, from downtown Little Rock to east uh, to the airport, mm -hmm. as well as from southwest Little Rock to take you to downtown. So really a true interconnectivity so we all can be connected together, whether you're in the south end, southwest Little Rock, downtown, right. west Little Rock, or the east end. Help with some of those traffic issues that you kind of tend to see from time to time yeah. as well. Uh, is there is there maybe like a city that you've kind of come across where you kind of got the idea from, or, or is this something you just like you said you're. Kind of in your own thoughts. And well, it's my own thoughts, but many of the great cities that I kind of benchmark the citizens of Little, uh, for the city of Little Rock mm -hmm. would be Nashville, uh, would be Atlanta, right. San Antonio, uh, Dallas, Fort Worth area. And but many times when you look at Atlanta, uh, that's a great example of, of a true public transit system. Uh, and I think it's something we can shoot for by having a modified light rail system. We also will be working with uh, Rock Region Metro to really ensure that we have bus 
bus rapid transit. If you go to Durham, uh, North Carolina, you'll actually see what bus rapid transit is, as well as in the DFW area. At the end of the day, we want to connect our citizens with our economy, and we have to ensure that they have all mobility options. And you mentioned the economy. Obviously, uh, a lot of the uh, the general funds are up. Uh, the sales tax receipts are up. County sales tax receipts are up. Uh, but what does that say to the area? Because I know here in, in, our, in our TV world, uh, we've actually dropped markets in terms of, and for people that don't kind of understand how that works, it's, it kind of goes by TV household. So it's almost like you lose some population to drop back markets, but it seems like everything's going up. So it's kind of an odd concept here, but I, I guess kind of getting back to it. it, it Economically, you know, what is the city doing and what have you guys forecasted here for at least the next year? Well, we're starting to see a lot of growth here in the city, uh, city of Little Rock and we're grateful uh, by being the capital city. We have a very diversified uh, marketplace uh, with government, distribution, health care, uh, small business and technology innovation. And so we uh, sometimes do not see uh, many of the highs or many of the lows. Right. We kind of stay right in the middle, uh, but we're grateful that we're starting to see an increase in property tax and sales tax. Already this year, we've been in office about 338, 339 days. Mm -hmm. We've already recruited or announced 1,100 new jobs. Uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed that we may have uh, be able to double that by the end of this oh, year. Wow. Uh, and so when you're starting to see a lot of the growth, we're excited about the energy uh, that entrepreneurs are seeing here in the city of Little Rock. Uh, and again, we want to focus on how do we uh, ensure the small business owners that we retain yeah. uh, that talent and how do we grow that talent as well as we're recruiting others to come to our city. But it's a lot of great growth and we're excited about it. And we're going to keep driving business development here in the city of Little Rock. And where, where you, what, like, what sectors are you guys seeing some of that growth in? We're seeing a lot of uh, growth in transportation distribution. As you know, we just recently recruited uh, CZ USA, which is a gun manufacturer that's located yeah. at the port. And one of the cool things about the city of Little Rock is we're centrally located here in the nation. Uh, and we also are, are interconnected with I-40 and I-30, which right. are the most traveled interstates in the entire United States. And so when you have river, rail, and road, uh, it's a great example of how we can grow jobs. Right, well, there you go. Uh, we got a lot more coming up here with uh, Mayor Frank Scott Jr. here on Capitol View. Plenty still to touch on. Still got some budget things to get to. And some other things like that. You're watching Capital View Sunday morning. Memories begin with a gift from Keepsakes. Your wedding rings will showcase your love and devotion. We take pride in personally selecting your diamonds direct from Antwerp, Belgium, home of the best diamonds in the world. For the best quality and prices, buy your diamonds from Keepsakes. On the economy, a unique leader, Mike Bloomberg's created over 400,000 jobs. As president, an opportunity economy that works for us. Tax fairness, where the wealthy pay their fair share. Education, affordable college and high-skill vocational training so people can succeed in the new economy. Economic security, lower-cost health care, and affordable middle-class housing. Proven leadership on jobs to build an economy where people don't just get by, they get ahead. I'm Mike Bloomberg, and I approve this message. Razorback basketball is back at Bud Walton Arena for the highly anticipated 2019-2020 season. Head coach Mike Neighbors and head coach Eric Musselman lead the Razorbacks into an exciting season of basketball on the hill. Let your voice be heard and help us make Bud Walton Arena the toughest hoops venue in the country. Secure your tickets now for Razorback men's and women's basketball by calling 800-982-HOGS or visit online at ArkansasRazorbacks.com. at Sanderson Farms. We wish you and your family a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Magic always happens with a gift from Keepsakes. Our stunning line of Philip Gabriel, the fastest growing designer line in America, is sure to make the perfect gift. Crafted in Italy and made to share with generations to come, Philip Gabriel's now on sale. Only $249 at Keepsakes Jewelry in Whitehall. You're watching Capital View. Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. And hey, welcome back into Capital View. Still here with uh, Mayor Frank Scott Jr. of Little Rock. Plenty more to get into here. Uh, obviously, one of the big talking points this past uh, year was was the golf course uh, issue. I, I know that became sort of a hot button topic here. Uh, I, I guess from a budget standpoint, what did what did we notice? What was the change? 
Well, I think it's good to understand that I come from a financial background, being a former bank executive right. for First Security Bank. Uh, when I came into the office uh, and understood uh, that the previous uh, budget was balanced uh, in 2018 uh, for the 2019 year, but was balanced with one-time money for reoccurring expenses. And right. so uh, being a former banker, I could not take a blind eye that understood the downstream negative ripple effects that would have. Sure. And so in leadership, sometimes you have to make tough decisions. And so what we had to do was uh, the board and I to right-size city government and by aligning ongoing revenues with ongoing expenses. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we had to make the tough decision to cut uh, close to $5 million of the city's budget right. uh, and to reduce our workforce around 44 positions. The good thing is uh, when there you have a general revenue budget, which what we cut from, yeah. uh, we also have a um, what I would call street fund budget. And yeah. so what we were able to do was to... Uh, figure out a way to realign those employees, many, not all, but yeah. many of those employees, uh, to shift them to our public works division that, mm -hmm. that did have some vacancies that we need to have more individuals to focus on uh, the cleanliness and the infrastructure of our city. Sure. So we were able to kind of salvage some of those employees, but we did have to make those very hard dollar cuts of $5 million. Yeah. And so again, it was a tough decision, something that we did not take lightly, but ultimately uh, it was the best decision for the city and the citizens of Little Rock being taxpayers. And so uh, what that did do is as we prepare for this 2020 budget mm -hmm. that we just recently passed a couple days ago is if we would not have made that decision, we would have been facing a $6.5 million budget deficit. Wow. And so I'm very happy uh, that the city board uh, took uh, the encouragement of myself and my team uh, to cut that budget. Yeah. And so we did that together, and which basically helped us to get to a balanced budget that matches ongoing revenues and ongoing expenses uh, for the 2020 year, which helps put the city of Little Rock on firmer financial footing right. so we can grow. And so we're excited about the future uh, by having a balanced budget this year going into 2020 as we start a new decade. There you go. Uh, and, and two, I, I know uh, the Razorbacks just played down here. Obviously, War Memorial, the golf course, hasn't lost that right. allure in terms of the tailgating and all that kind of scene. But uh, what, what are some of those plans? I know, I know you guys put something out uh, initially when, when you were kind of proposing some of this. But, but has, has that evolved at all? Or are we still kind of sticking to the, the plan there? Well, yes. Uh, recently, after we had the challenge of uh, making that challenging decision mm -hmm. to shut down the golf course, not necessarily the uh, War Memorial Park and Hyman Park, but right. the golf course. And so it presents opportunities. And so War Memorial Park is close to 90 acres. And so uh, we commissioned a R3 Little Rock Parks Task Force, which stands for reinvestment, revitalization, and reimagining what happens in War Memorial Park and Hyman Park. And so uh, this task force has been meeting. They're going to present to the city board their recommendations on January 7th. Uh, I do understand that some of those re recommendations will include expansion of the zoo. It would include a regional youth sports complex, uh, open line entertainment, a connection of the Southwest Trails through War Memorial Park and South oh, yeah. and Hyman Park. And so what we want to see is War Memorial Park and Hyman Park to uh, be the Piedmont Park uh, that you see in Atlanta yeah. or uh, the Central Park in New York City. If you've ever been to Tulsa to the gathering places. Oh, so yeah, we have great. some great opportunities to take these anchoring institutions, these anchoring parks in our city uh, to create a place that becomes a uni unifying factor in our city. And we will uh, see that come to light here in the future. All right. Uh, and no real easy way to transition out of that here, but kind of a uh, buzzkill here. Uh, homicides in Little Rock up from last year. Uh, it's been kind of been sort of a steady drop, and then all of a sudden we've seen a pop up here. Uh, I, I guess a couple of things here. Well, uh, well let me yeah, kind of yeah, interject. On, Homicides, uh, you, is, we always have to understand how we take stats. So number one, uh, we had 57 homicides in the city of Little Rock last year. We're okay. still, uh, we're at 43 right now, so right. we're not up. Uh, we're actually below. Uh, but one of the cool things is I think what we have, we don't do a great job of sharing is the clearance rate. Uh, no one can control crime. What right. we can do is help prevent crime. Mm -hmm. uh, but when crime happens, we have to address it and address it swiftly. And so what we see right now is an 80% clearance rate. So what that means is when crime happens and if there's a, a homicide or a case, an open case, it's closed 80% of the time. Right. And so we want to give kudos to our Little Rock Police Department and the leadership because they are clearing these cases. 80%. The aver national average is 65%. So what that means is when crime happens in Little Rock, we address it. We yeah. address it swiftly. And now, is there, are there any preventative measures that, that maybe uh, the city and LRPD are kind of looking into or even implementing now that you try to get ahead of that curve, not necessarily have to clear anything? Yes, I, I definitely would say one of the things I think you understand that years ago, back in 2017, before I uh, came into office in 2019, uh, we had a high vacancy rate. I also yeah. want to give some credit uh, to Chief Buckner as well as to Chief Humphrey, as well as the L Little Rock Police Department uh, leadership, because what they've done is close that high vacancy rate. And so we are now nearly uh, at a 
full complement staff of uh, 594 police officers. And so we're excited about that. And so what you'll start to see is a greater presence. And mm -hmm. many times when you have a greater presence of a police force, uh, it helps prevent crime to happen. And then secondly, I still remain committed to uh, a campaign promise of figuring out how we can increase our police force and make sure as we increase our police force that our police officers are engaged into community policing. They're getting outside of their vehicles, really engaging by building relationships and trust with our, our community as we protect and serve and have a guardian mentality. Uh, so we're really excited about that. And then uh, thirdly, uh, Chief Humphrey is also focused on a geographical presence right. uh, on how, how we patrol uh, within the community to uh, identify crime and address it swiftly. All right, so there you go here. Uh, also, too, uh, historic flooding this past year. A lot of communities in Arkansas hit, uh, hit hard by this. Little Rock, maybe not as hard as a lot of those, but mm. still had some spots that, that were really uh, taking the task here. Uh, I guess what's, what's an update on them? Uh, in some of those areas that, that were really hit hard. Well, I think we also got to uh, ensure that we always um are sensitive that there were other areas within central Arkansas sure. that were hit harder than Little Rock. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and we want to um, let everyone know that we continue to be helpful to our regional partners uh, throughout that process. While we did experience a uh, historic flood, uh, we were able to be very uh, swift in how we addressed those challenges mm -hmm. and, uh, with our emergency management team. I'm very grateful for FEMA for stepping up. Uh, and so at this point in time, a lot of our uh, recovery efforts have been uh, completed and we're excited about it. All right, so there you go again. Little Rock Mayor Frank Scott Jr. coming in, Candid Conversation Boss. We Thank certainly you. do appreciate you coming on in here. All right, when we come back, we have a special segment highlighting a program that helps students get to work. We'll tell you how Arkansas is leading the nation in this effort. You're watching Capital View Sunday morning. Steve's Auto Body in Searcy, the collision repair experts. At Steve's, we are known for flawless work and quick turnaround. We work with all insurance companies and can handle your claim start to finish. Call 501-380-6345 or stop by Steve's at 200 East Line Road in Searcy. That's right by to the king. We just getting started. We just getting started. Wishing you and your family a Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday Season. With our busy lives today, we often forget the greatest gift of Christmas. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. I hope all of us will take the time and share the love of Christ this season. May your holidays be filled with joy and blessings. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from all of us at Everett. Come and enjoy a new experience in shopping for your home. At Aladdin Rugs and Home Decor, we have over 5,000 rugs in the latest colors and styles. Bring your pillows, your pillow shams, and sizes. We will help you select the perfect rug. We're number one in customer service with 15,000 square feet of rugs, unique home decor, wallpaper, and flooring. Remember, buy today, take it home today, and save. Why wait? Every time you earned a paycheck, a little part of it went to pay the government for your Social Security Disability Insurance. When you paid in, you did your part. Now, if you can't work because of a physical or mental condition, you have a right to the benefits you paid for. At Rainwater Holes in Sexton, we help people get the Social Security Disability benefits they deserve. We're Rainwater Holes in Sexton. Let us help you weather the storm. 888-8888. Steve's Auto Body in Searcy, the collision repair experts. At Steve's, we are known for flawless work and quick turnaround. We work with all insurance companies and can handle your claim start to finish. Call 501-380-6345 or stop by Steve's at 200 East Line Road in Searcy. You're watching Capital View. Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. Welcome back to Capital View. We finally decided to get out of the studio here. We're finally in this 80 by 25 foot trailer here. Let me step out of the way here. Y'all can take a look around here. It's the Be Pro, Be Proud, and what they do is crazy stuff here. They've got lots of stuff here. If you're really looking to get into a trade, these are the things you're probably going to do. They've got the simulators and everything like that here. Let me bring in Angela Harrison here with Wellsco, big part of this thing here. And Angela, 
I, I guess first and foremost, I mean, the stuff itself is cool, but there's a lot of why behind this. Tell me about the why here. Well, we realize that not everybody is interested in a four-year college education, and a lot of people are starting to go to trade, and we need welders. We need truck drivers. There's a shortage of all of them, and they get paid very well. Yeah, and that's the one thing I guess a lot of students don't realize is, you know, a lot of these things, I mean, it sounds like grunt labor, but, I mean, you make a pretty penny doing this kind of stuff. Definitely, yes. Welders can make, probably, some welders start at 80000 I mean, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, so, uh, again, let's kind of take a look around here. Uh, Kyle, our guy here with us here, show the folks here what's going on here. But uh, bring it in here, and, and I guess, too, what are what are some of the, the things that we can do here? Scott Calloway here, he's the uh, tour guide here at Be Pro, Be Proud. Uh, what, what all can we, what all we have that we have, that we can do here? So what we have going on in this part of the truck is we have our welding simulator. We bring our students over, and we train them up on proper technique and laying a basic weld. And we get prizes away on this station, so the, the kids with the highest score after they lay their weld will get a prize to go home with. There's a lot of competition on this, and when the kids get out of here, they are really fired up about welding. So that's what this section is all about. Yeah. Pun fully intended there here. Uh, but even beyond the welding here, you know, we've got robot chickens here. We've got the bucket trucks here. Uh, you know, what do we got going here? We got the... Uh, the backhoes and everything going on here too. Just kind of quickly run through yep. some of this. So in this section right here, we have our robotic arm from ABB and Tyson. Uh, this is a job that you would have at Tyson Foods. What they're doing is uh, palletizing protein. And this actual simulator is spelling a word and the kids come over and they try to figure out what word is being spelled with the chickens. Right on here. You guys want to come on. Yeah, yeah. And then this, this thing right here is probably one of my favorite. You got the John Deere here running the backhoes and all that so stuff. Heavy equipment operators are super important to our construction industry. What we're doing here is moving dirt on a construction site. I come from this world, my background is in this, and let me just tell you, this is very authentic from the trucks right down to the tractor, and so what we're doing here is we're just taking dirt and we're moving it from uh, position to position on a construction site. And, and I guess the key thing for all of these things is just the authenticity and the, and the feel of it here, because I know even back there you've got the, uh, the diesel simulator as well, which right. is a really good time, let me tell you. But, but it, it, it feels exactly how it would out in the field. That's right. When you come in here and you put your hands on this, it lets you touch, taste, and feel this so that you can get an authentic look so that you know, hey, I didn't know much about this before, but now I do, and I want to do this now. And then they're asking all the pertinent questions, and then we can help from there. So. Absolutely here. But uh, take it around here. Uh, let's kind of bring some more folks in here. And I guess talk to us, too, about just sort of the, the what this thing is. I know we kind of got into some of the nuts and bolts of, you know, all the dimensions everything here. But but what is this thing? Be pro, be proud. And, and you guys are all over the state here as well. We are. We are. Um, we started this effort in 2016 and is designed to change the conversation students, parents, and teachers are having about skilled professions. All of those things that you've always heard about as being middle-skilled jobs. No one is going to be, no one's going to aspire to obtain a middle-skilled job. Right. But when you start telling them exactly what these things look like, what kind of responsibilities you might have, it starts to change people's ideas. So that because yeah. these things are all professional-grade careers, right. they are in huge demand, and there are huge incomes that can be uh, that they can obtain. That are a short period of time, and there are fortunes that these careers can put a person in position to, uh, to get. And, and obviously, too, I know, I know it's a big push from the governor to, to really get into the trades. And you know, Angela mentioned the, the shortage yeah. and the fact that you can make a lot of money. I mean, are, are you guys starting to see a lot of that? I, you guys have been going with this for about what four years now. About four really starting to see some bumps up in those trades? We're starting to see some movement. Uh -huh. Schools are starting to report that there are increases in enrollment rates. High schools are reporting that students are starting to have conversations in the hallways about what this stuff really means right. and what they can do with themselves. There's always been, well, I'm going to go to college or I'm going to go to the Army or I'm going to go do something else. Right. This is providing really specific content for what that something else can be what it can be here and also too I mean how cool is it you can get in a bucket truck there and every you know, single piece that you see on this truck are real simulator tools used by these industries and these professions to educate new hires so everything has been designed to be as authentic as you said and, and you mentioned the, the you mentioned the education too I know that's been a really big part of it here is is a lot of these kids you know they come into things like this and a lot of the school programs now and you know they're job ready it's not like they have to go through like the old school type of apprenticeship and things like that I mean you get in there 
a lot of these companies are hiring, they realize, hey, you got the skills to pay the bills, jump right on into it. There's a huge pool of talent that leaves high school and goes to pursue a four-year degree because right. that's really what they know how to go do. We know that that, that dropout rate out of college of talented individuals mm -hmm. continues to be a pretty high number. Right. This is providing a whole lot more exposure to what they can do in, as an alternative to that. All right, now let me bring Kyle over here because this is by far the coolest thing here. And I really just wanted to show this off because I, I tried this earlier and I completely bombed it. Uh, but Scott, what do we got here? We got the, the actual 18-wheeler truck going here. Right, so what we have here, obviously the trucking industry is represented. CDL drivers are in high demand right now in our state, and so what our students can do here is they can sit in a real Class A CDL truck, and they're going to go through a real setting out in the city or out in the country of what they would face. So what my driver here is doing is he is going to face real traffic situations, real situations with pedestrians. He's going to monitor his speed and watch for his speed, as far, check out the speed limit, and it's going to grade and score him on how well he does that. All right, and again, guys, uh, if you saw our tease about this on Twitter, I completely bombed it. I ran over a lady. I ran into a gas truck. I ended up in the middle of a farm. Uh, so, and again, it does feel real. That The chair's really, really nice and cushioned, too, and I don't even want to talk about what my score was here. Uh, so, again, be pro, be proud, big-time thing here, and they're really doing some great things here. So, uh, we'll wrap that up here. We've got more Capital View. We're going to come back and wrap this thing up right after this. This Fritos Chili Cheese Junior Wrap is only 99 cents. And that's a wrap. Right, but you know the commercial's not over, right? And that's a car. Yep, very good. And that's a camera. Three for three, good job, buddy. That's a Fritos Chili Cheese Junior Wrap while they last. Order ahead for happy hour anytime. Acre Family Pharmacy is proud to serve as Maumelle's only locally owned pharmacy. This allows us to offer better care at a better price with extended hours, free delivery, and custom compounded medications. So come on over and let our family care for yours. Only one thing's more exciting than getting a Lexus, giving one. It's unbelievable. It really is. The Lexus December to Remember sales event. Lease the 2020 RX 350 all-wheel drive for $4.19 a month for 27 months. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. This Fritos Chili Cheese Junior Wrap is only 99 cents. And that's a wrap. Right, but you know the commercial's not over, right? And that's a car. Yep. Very good. And that's a camera. Three for three. Good job, buddy. That's a Fritos Chili Cheese Junior Wrap while they last. Order ahead for happy hour anytime. You're watching Capital View. Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. That is it for this week's Capital View. I need to keep my eyes on the road here, but make sure you download the Capital View podcast wherever you get your podcast. And we will see you guys again next week. And hopefully I don't crash. Oh, there. Oh, gosh. Trade warming.